Okay, and we're back with another MDT 2013 screencast, this time looking at automated driver deployment. So in previous screencasts, we had to look at configuring, deploying images via MDT and WDS. So I'm back on my MTD, um, MDT server, and I've opened up MDT. So previously, we imported some operating systems. So expand that, and you can see I've got Windows 7. I put them into folders just to keep it tidy. Windows 7 x64, Windows 7 x86, we've got those. We also created some TAS sequences so that we could deploy those once booted into WDS. We could deploy those TAS sequences, restoring the relevant operating system to different hardware. So now we're going to look at importing drivers um, and then automating the deployment of those drivers to specific hardware. So you can see in an out-of-box drivers folder, I've got a Windows 7 folder, and then in there I've got an x86 folder and an x64 folder. And then I've got different models underneath each of these. So depending on which operating system, 32-bit, 64-bit, we've then got the relevant model, and then we've imported all of the drivers into there. So the folder name for the model is very important. You need to run the command prompt on the machine that you'll be deploying the drivers to. And you need to type in this, this command here on the screen. WMIC space computer system space get model or get space model, sorry. And then here you see mine's a virtual machine, so it says model VMware virtual platform. But on yours, it would say whatever it is, a HP uh, and then the model number. So oh, I've run it on these machines I've got here. And then you would create the new folder and then you would name it whatever came up in that command prompt window. So, uh, for example, I've got the Aspire E1-522 there. You need to name this exactly the same as comes up there, otherwise it won't work. So then once you've got that folder, you're going to right-click on it and you're going to import relevant drivers. So the drivers you probably would have installed, or sorry, downloaded from the relevant website, so the Acer website, the HP website. You'd go to the directory and you would let MDT do its thing and import them all. And then you're going to end up with all of these in there, and you're probably going to have 64-bit and 32-bit drivers in the same folder. So what I did, or what I like to do, is I like to copy and paste all of the x86 version of the drivers out and just paste them into the 32 or the x86 relevant model folder on, on there as well. You see I've copied them all into there, and then I've deleted them out of my x64 version because I don't want 32-bit drivers in my 64-bit folder and vice versa. So that's why I've done that. It just keeps it nice and tidy, and it's just an easier way to work for me. So if there's an updated driver, you know exactly where you need to change the driver, you model specific, right down to the model, you know. If there's a new driver out, you know exactly which driver it is you need to replace. So that's pretty much the long and short of importing the drivers into MDC, but there's a couple more steps we need to take before we can deploy them um, or automate the deployment to specific model laptops. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into advanced uh, advanced configuration and a selection, we're going to create a selection profile. So you can see I've got a couple there already. So we're going to right click on selection profiles, new selection profile, and then we're going to give it a relevant name. So I've got a 64-bit version of the Aspire there. So let's do a 32-bit version. So x86 Aspire E1-522. Gonna hit next, and then you're gonna select the folder that contains the relevant drivers. So out of box drivers, Windows 7, x86, Aspire E1-522. Hit next, next. Let it do its thing, and we're gonna hit finish. So then we can see we've got a new selection profile there. So there's one more step we need to take now, and that is to either edit or create a new task sequence depending on what stage you're at with the laptop that you're deploying or the computer that you're deploying. And underneath there, I'm going to create a new task sequence. I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to give it a name. So this one's an Aspire E1-522. And I'm going to call it x86 so that I know it's the 32 version. I'm going to leave it as a standard client task sequence and I'm going to select the relevant operating system. I'm not going to put a key in. 
Going to put in my organization of pretend code. I'm going to set Mactasia as my home page. We've covered this in other screencasts, but just for the process of this, we'll show you. A local admin password. Let that do its thing and click finish. Then I'm going to double click on my task sequence. Now I'm going to go into the task sequence tab. Now this is where a lot of the magic happens. And minimize that. And so we're going to go into the pre install tasks and we're going to add a new general set task sequence variable task. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to add it. And then we're going to type in uh, the location of the drivers essentially. So in this case, it's driver group 001. And then the value is the location of those drivers. So Windows 7, my structure, backslash x86, backslash, and then the model folder name. But you put in percent model percent because then depending on what it pulls from that command prompt we put in, it knows which folder to look in. That's why we named it exactly the same. So I'm just going to push that task sequence up above the inject drivers. And we need to modify inject drivers, change the selection profile down to nothing, and hit apply. So that's the pre-install task part done. We've put, we put in our drivers on pre install. So we need to edit our post install, inject drivers, and then we're going to disable this step completely and click apply and OK. And that is basically how you do it. So we're going to update our deployment share because we've made some big changes. So right click deployment share and then we're going to update it. And then once that's updated, you go ahead, pixie boot, select your um, your task sequence, and then if everything's gone properly, you'll be able to have all of your laptop or desktop built with all of the drivers. Hope you found this useful. If there's any questions, please drop them in the comments, and I'll try my best to help you out.